Good morning, everybody. Nice to see everyone. I apologize for the delay. I know we were hoping to start uh, several minutes ago, but as per usual, we've just been facing some technical difficulties. If you could just bear with us for just another minute um, and we'll get going. Okay, so welcome everyone. Good morning. Um, I do have uh, all three elected officials uh, either on the webinar and or on the phone. And so we will uh, work our way through all the technical difficulties and hopefully uh, be able to move forward with this town hall as planned. Um, thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual town hall meeting. My name is Shakiba. I'm the president and CEO of the Guelph Chamber of Commerce. And although much has changed in the last few weeks, I do want to begin by reinforcing um, our mission statement here at the Guelph Chamber of Commerce, which is that we are informed by our diverse business and community voices, and that we create value for our members by advocating, connecting, and convening to grow Guelph Wellington's economic prosperity. I want our members and the business community to know that although we are working remotely as a team at the Chamber, we are here, uh, we're working uh, virtually and remain committed to serving you. The Guelph Chamber's position during this crisis can be best captured through a quote that I'd like to read from the CEO of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, Rocco Rossi, who stated the other day that prioritizing public health is our best long-term economic strategy. Although the mandatory closure of workplaces will affect many of our members, this is a short-term measure so that our businesses and economy can recover quicker. We need to stop talking about supporting public health and supporting businesses like they are two separate things. We want to starve the virus, but we don't want to starve the economy permanently. So the faster we stop the spread of COVID-19, the faster our businesses and our economy can recover. So please do continue to practice physical distancing and at workplaces where employees must be on site, please ensure that stringent health and safety measures are in place. We have been advocating on your behalf to all levels of government for the tools, funding and other supports you need during this period. And I'd like to thank MP Lloyd Longfield, MPP Mike Schreiner and Mayor Cam Guthrie and their teams for responding to our members' concerns regularly. It's great to see our elected officials come together to support our community like this. And I look forward to hearing about your business needs, your questions and solutions during the next hour or so. We will be giving each elected official approximately five minutes to provide an address at the top of this webinar. And then uh, we will move into a question and answer period. I will moderate questions. And if anyone would like to ask a question, please type it in the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. If you would like to direct a question specifically to one person, please clearly state to whom. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible, but please know we have over 240 people on the call webinar today, which is really great. Um, but if we don't, uh, if we're unable to answer your specific question, please send me an email, shakiba, S-H-A-K-I-B-A, at guelphchamber.com, an email with that question, and I'll be sure to either answer it or redirect it to one of our elected officials. I do know that uh, we are recording this town hall and we will be posting it to our YouTube page and it will be shared broadly uh, if you'd like to rewatch or share it within your own networks. And lastly, I will be mentioning some additional resources provided by other local business support organizations, uh, partners of ours in economic development here locally at the end of the webinar. So please stay tuned for that information as well. I'd like to pass it over uh, first to Lloyd um, good morning, Mike. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, and uh, we'll start with Lloyd and go from there. Great. Thanks, Shakiba. And thanks for setting this up with challenges with technology. I guess a lot of us have been experiencing as we're setting things up to work from our homes and, and re work remotely. Um, it is unprecedented and uh, we are learning as we go, uh, as you can see with 
different programs that are being rolled out from the federal government, uh, basically daily, almost hourly. Um, in our process, we have uh, daily conference calls with my staff in Ottawa and Guelph uh, to talk about what we're hearing. And then we have conference calls at the end of the day uh, with Ottawa, with the other MPs and with the, with the department heads and the officials. Um, we are keeping each other informed about what our communities are doing and then how we can work together to uh, make sure that we're coordinating efforts with the local governments, with the province, with the chambers of commerce and the others that are working to support our community as we go through this together. And learning lessons, as I said, in terms of how do we support the vulnerable in our communities? How do we make sure that business owners that don't have access to EI have access to, to money coming in uh, from the federal government? Um, looking at the CRP program that we're doing, the emergency relief program, um, also the uh, programs around employment insurance and seeing how overloaded that system became quickly, um, then going into payroll support and 75% payroll support to businesses that have experienced a 30% drop in, in their income. So as, as we go through it today, we'll be hearing more from the finance minister about how to access those programs. I've been saying online that it's important for people to have uh, accounts set up with uh, Canada Revenue Agency because a lot of the money will be flowing through CRA. Uh, looking at deferring taxes for people uh, that are, let's say, seniors or, or businesses um, that would normally be submitting uh, payments to the government. Uh, that they hold on to those payments until June, um, businesses holding on payments until August, and then working with the banks. And I've been talking with all the banks in Guelph uh, to, to make sure that um, they're getting connected to the services that we're providing with interest-free loans up to $40,000 for businesses with payrolls between $50,000 and a million dollars, and having 25% of that <laughs> forgivable if it, the loans are paid within a, a certain period of time. So working with United Way, uh, yesterday speaking with United Way, United Way Canada's got some federal funding to help uh, reinforce their seniors programs, the Meals on Wheels programs, the New Horizons programs. And I know that the, the United Way across Canada is having conference calls this morning to talk about how that will roll out to individual communities. So we'll work with United Way on that. United Way also working with the Community Foundation, uh, which is establishing a, a COVID-19 um, fund that we'll be able to roll out through our community as well. So many, many people, many, many organizations working in Guelph to react to the uh, threat that we have through COVID-19. But of course, the most important is to look after health and make sure people are isolating themselves, making sure people know how to access support when they need it, doing the online assessments um, and, and keeping themselves safe. I know we have a daughter that's working in, in a drugstore and, and coming home every day, using the back door, going straight downstairs, having a shower, changing her clothes uh, to try and keep us safe as well. Uh, so each family and each each business uh, is reacting as we need to in this in this time. And uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Shakib, and thank you so much for getting our technology mostly up and working. I know a lot of that's beyond your control, but uh, it's great to see Mike and you, and I'm, I'm trusting Cam is in the background somewhere. To folks, if they're having difficulties with audio or video, again, we are recording this and we'll be posting it for viewing at a later time. Um, and feel free to continue to flag uh, concerns or questions, uh, general commentary in the chat box. I have team members also monitoring. So uh, thanks, Lloyd, for that update. And um, Cam can hear us. And a uh, worst case scenario, if he uh, isn't online with us in a few minutes, I will just call him on his phone and we'll hear from him through my uh, computer. But I'll pass the mic over first to Mike. Okay, thanks, Shakiba. And Lloyd, great to see you. And Cam, hopefully you can hear, hear as well. And uh, just thank everyone for joining us. Uh, today. Uh, I think my biggest message is I've just been so inspired and impressed by the way people are really pulling together uh, our entire community as well as all three levels of government. I think Lloyd and Cam and I have been speaking or texting pretty much every day. Uh, I will give credit to the provincial government. I have a direct 
line now to almost all the ministers and we're talking on a regular basis to make sure people have the supports they need. I especially want to give a shout out to the healthcare leaders in the community. Uh, I know the family health team was one of the first to say, hey, let's let's set up a an assessment center. Uh, the healthcare leaders have mobilized and we have to use uh, it, with the unhoused population and more vulnerable uh, population in Guam, people mobilized very quickly over the weekend to, um, to set up solutions. And so I'm just impressed. I mean, I read kids' stories last night on a Facebook Live page set up by people here in Guelph. So a lot of people are really rallying to help each other. Uh, and so, and I, and I, and also just all three levels of government as well as all parties. And I can tell you at Queen's Park, the all-party conversation started early in March, uh, and we negotiated our way through a number of unanimous consent motions to pass legislation, uh, one to, for the functioning of the legislature and two for uh, the first mini budget slash relief package from the province. Uh, and our next round of negotiations start tomorrow, and we'll be I'll be back at Queen's Park on April 14th. Uh, and just uh, real quickly, uh, and I'm sure as things go on, we'll probably go into the details, um, but the province's aid mini budget slash aid package uh, was around a uh, $17 billion package, though there's some dispute around those numbers, which I won't get into unless asked specifically. Uh, about $3.3 billion of that goes directly to health care. Uh, and I think one of the things I'm hearing from people on the front lines in healthcare is that we're probably going to need more personal protective equipment. And so I'm going to be looking for increased allocations there, though there is um, about a billion dollars in contingency funds that allows the government to respond quickly to, to changes. There's about $3.7 billion for um, supports for people and businesses. And I think for the people on this call, out of that, that might be the most interested is there is a fund for food banks, shelters, nonprofits serving vulnerable populations that you can apply for. So I've already started meeting with some groups on that. Uh, for small businesses, uh, an employer health tax exemption has been increased to a million dollars for those of you with payrolls under five million, which is something I've actually been advocating for for a long time. So that was nice to see in there. And then those of you probably are aware of changes in the way time of use, um, temporary changes uh, around uh, time of use rates for electricity. And then there's about uh, 10 billion in um, uh, mostly deferred taxes for businesses, which we can get into those details more later as well. But probably the most prominent here would be uh, 1.9 billion for deferral of uh, WIB payments, which I know directly affect businesses, nonprofits, and charities in terms of your your payroll expenses, and 1.8 billion in um, deferred educational property taxes, which can help free up cash flow for municipalities. And just I don't know if Marty Williams is on the call, but that was one that Marty pointed out to me that would hopefully really help uh, downtown businesses and municipalities. And I spoke with Cam about that. And it was certainly a priority for him. And so that was something I advocated uh, strongly and was really pleased the government uh, responded uh, to that. And um, and so I think I'll just close by saying that uh, two things. One is I'm really concerned about uh, people making their rent payments tomorrow, whether you're a business or a tenant or a landlord dealing with cash flow issues related to that. Uh, the second one is I just really want to thank Lloyd and the federal government for really stepping up, especially on increasing the wage subsidy to 75 percent, uh, because I know I was hearing from a lot of businesses around that. And so I was passing that along to Lloyd and Lloyd, I know you were a very strong advocate on that. So thank you. That was that was a huge announcement. Um, all the announcements have been huge. The you know, expanding EI supports, et cetera. So so I really appreciate that. And, uh, and then, um, Cam, I know, um, you know, you as chair of LUMCO feeding information to me that I can pass on to the province has been really important as well. And so I want to thank you for that. And then all the healthcare leaders in the community who have been reaching out on a regular basis, um, you know, continue to push 
those messages along uh, to the appropriate ministry and the businesses who have stepped up, you know, whether it's hand sanitizer or ventilator production. Uh, I've just been really impressed by the way uh, businesses in Guelph have really rallied to be a part of providing solutions. So thank you and looking forward to everyone's questions. Uh, with um, everything, all the excellent news that's come out from both the federal and the government is how do we access uh, those programs? And so I know we all said, and we'll get into that, and I promise we will, and I'll be posing some specific questions. And I, I know uh, those participating now also have some specific questions. So it'd be great to dig into that. But first I will call um, our mayor. And if you don't mind, Mike and Lloyd, to just mute your um, your uh, screens for now, just so that we can avoid any echoing. And I'm gonna call Cam through my computer. Hey, Shakiba. Hi, Cam, you're uh, on. Can uh, everyone hear Cam? Go ahead, Cam. Okay, sorry that uh, I'm not able to connect uh, the, the, the right way there, but it's good uh, thinking on your feet there, Shakiba, to give me a call and and just use the, the phone here. So uh, I have been able to hear, I, I believe most of what Lloyd said and, and, and Mike, and just to echo, uh, we, we have been working really well together. So thank you to the other levels of government. Uh, as uh, most people would probably understand, uh, the municipal government uh, is trying to, uh, it's, we're in a unique position because we are trying to handle and respond to the things that are under our control, but then we are also reacting to two other levels of government that are making decisions above us. And so it's been uh, a very interesting few weeks here uh, as we have been trying to make decisions and then uh, also react to the changes up above. Uh, just as one example, it's I would say it's the municipal governments that have led with you know closing of playgrounds and uh, structures and things like that outside for the last over a week or so. Um, and then just yesterday, the government, when they, the provincial government, when they expanded their uh, state of emergency for the next few weeks, they have now province-wide said that they have to close. So sometimes it's us making decisions from the municipal end where the provincial government is uh, is coming along, and then a lot of times it's the provincial government making mandates that the municipal government then has to respond to. So it's been very interesting. Um, I would say uh, just to get right into sort of the business part of of this uh this webinar today is i just wanted to let everyone know right away and you can definitely go to uh, guelph.ca where there is information there for what your local city council has been able to do and so last monday we had uh, an emergency meeting uh, of council and it was very quick because it was focused on just passing issues that we know we needed to do right away and uh, just to let you know we did about three or four different things and some of them have some bullet points to them I'll just verbally go through them right now very quickly so the first one is that uh, the parking permit fees were waived to assist the downtown businesses and employees for the entire month of April, all the way through to the entire month of the uh, end of April. Uh, as you know, we've continued to waive uh, all the transit fees as well. Um, and so that, uh, that has come into play uh, for those that need to go to work, need to go to appointments, things like that. And then when it comes to property tax relief for the businesses and the residents, uh, again, right through uh, for April, uh, the next payment schedule for property tax was supposed to be April the 30th anyways, but we are waiving any interest, no penalty or anything that would apply from May 1st on for those that might not be able to, uh, to pay that on the payment schedule and no NSF fees as well. Um, no progressive collection activities, uh, you know, people calling, asking where your money is. We're not going to be doing any of that. Um, and then if any of you are on a pre-authorized payment plan, uh, if you either call into our tax department uh, or you can email tax at guelph.ca um, and give at least a 10 days heads up notice, uh, they will stop 
the pre-authorized payment plan uh, that uh, that you are on. And so those are the measures that we've taken to date. But I do want to let the, the business community know and, and, and residents too that um, there's other options that are on the table. Uh, as you've heard, all levels of government continually say that things are changing hourly or daily. It's absolutely the truth. And so as things change hourly or daily, uh, then we will continue to assess our options at the municipal level and we will respond um, as needed and I will call emergency meetings for council to make more changes if need be. Uh, with that, I'll change it, uh, send it back over to you, Shakiva. Thank you, uh, Mayor Guthrie. Cam, I appreciate this and if it's okay then we'll just keep you on the phone and so that you can chime in as needed. Sure. Awesome. Um, great. So I really appreciate the uh, background and the address from each of you this morning. I want to jump right into some specific questions and uh, we'll make sure everyone has the opportunity to respond. A uh, friendly reminder to try and mute and unmute gentlemen as possible just to keep echo as limited as possible. And um, I'll jump in and uh, direct this first question to Lloyd. Um, we have a lot of um, uncertainty around the CRB, uh, EI, and wage subsidy. And I'm wondering if you can delineate the difference for folks about when does an, when, what is the responsibility of an employer and their uh, options for uh, staffing, and what is an individual or employee um, program ability. So again, who applies to EI? Who applies to CERB? And then maybe we can talk about the wage subsidy that is the program available to employers. Sure, the, the wage subsidy, um, first of all, I'll start with, the, those details will be coming out today uh, on how employers can access 75% uh, wage subsidy. And uh, that's for all sizes of employers. To flow money straight through the employer that gets reimbursed by the government so that they can uh, pay their employees. The regular EI system is in place, uh, one week waiting period to apply. Unless you have COVID-19, uh, then you can apply directly right away. That system is overloaded. Uh, so people have had trouble getting through on that, but it's still in place. Um, the uh, CERP will be um, the uh, $2,000 per month payment to uh, people that don't have access to EI or people whose employers aren't paying them uh, through the wage subsidy program. And that program, again, will be launched. Uh, the target is for April the 6th, uh, but in early April, we'll see the details of that, which will also be put forward to the public uh, by Minister Morneau uh, today. And we're getting those uh, those announcements at the same time as the public is uh, on um, getting the connections to the right site. So what I've been saying to people is, if you are going to be looking at uh, support uh, through this uh, direct support of the $2,000 a month, uh, to go to CRA and set up a, a um, personal account on CRA. Uh, and, and there's ways of doing that uh, by um, answering some questions, your social insurance number, there's one of the lines from your 2018 tax return that's asked for, and uh, you go in through your bank account when you need your password for your ATM uh, 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 password so that the federal government can then directly deposit into your personal accounts. And I'm just going to ask some follow-up questions to that, um, although I will say, get to Lloyd's point, that a lot of the details are actually still coming out. And so questions about how to calculate, let's say, the wage subsidy um, and some of those process pieces haven't been shared yet, which is why folks feel right. unsure. So, um, right. you know, please note that that's the case. Um, again, Lloyd, um, for those wondering, um, do they go through EI first or CERB? What kind of information, what, how would you direct them? Sorry, a lot of echoes there. Um, I think the question was about EI. Uh, if you apply into EI and you're not successful or you, they, that you're turned down, you'll automatically be flipped into the CERP program. 
so the people that have already applied into EI um, can will be will be flipped over to uh, to the other program if they're not uh, accepted. Was that the question? Yes, thank you, Lloyd. Um, and uh, can you confirm if the two thousand dollars is taxed off the top or not? One more time, sorry. Um, will the two thousand dollar monthly payment be taxed? Uh, yes, it will be. It's 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 an income. Um, it's obviously going to be taxed at a lower rate. Um, uh, but uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, it is income, so it will have a tax. Okay. Um, let me pass the question to um, MPP Schreiner. Um, you spoke a little bit about the looming April 1st rent date. Of course, that's tomorrow. Um, to Cam and or Mike, um, what uh, can the city or province do or have plans regarding property tax relief? And uh, which, of course, is how landlords can help uh, defer uh, tenant payments. You know, we know evictions are illegal right now, but what more do we know and what more is possible? Yeah, well, I'll let Cam speak specifically to the property tax deferral. I can say one of the reasons um, we push for the 90 day deferral in the municipality paying the education portion of the property tax. Oh. Sorry. No um, I'm just going to ask uh, uh, Lloyd if, if you're not muted, if you could mute yourself. And then um, I'm going to let Mike uh, continue speaking and then I'll pass it to Cam. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, so like I said, I'll let Cam speak specifically to municipal property tax. Um, so one of the reasons we pushed for the deferral of uh, the municipality paying their portion of the education property tax payment uh, was to give municipalities the cash flow to be able to work uh, with residents and businesses on property tax. So the municipality will eventually have to pay that the way the legislation is written right now. So it's a 90 day deferral, uh, which will hopefully free up cash flow in the short term for municipalities. Um, I was hoping that there would be some sort of emergency rent uh, program in Ontario, similar to what BC and Quebec and some of the other provinces have done, because I know it's going to take a little while for people to um, access their federal benefits. Uh, but the the good news is in the short term at least nobody will be evicted um so the so eviction notices may still go out but the province is not going to enforce any eviction notices so nobody has to worry about being evicted um if they don't pay their um their rent uh on april 1st uh but sorting out how that's going to look uh further down the line is something that at this point uh, landlords and tenants, both both on the business side and the residential side, uh, are going to have to work out. Okay, great. And now I'll pass it to Cam. Uh, thank you. Uh, what Mike said there was all accurate uh, from a timing perspective. I did, I think, just touched on this a little bit in my opening uh, remarks. Was uh, that everything is on the table for review. Uh, and when when more information becomes available on the impacts and the options available to us uh, from a financial point of view from the municipality to try to help out both citizens and businesses, um, then that's something that we will we'll have to take a look at. Uh, that is already being looked at and reviewed. I can confirm that already. So that's just being worked on at City Hall. Uh, but just to give a little bit of a, Again, a time frame issue. We had we had our emergency council meeting on Monday last week, where we did um, all of the issues that I outlined in my opening remarks to try to help with some relief. It wasn't until the next day um, that uh, some more information became available from uh, the province, and I believe it was like Wednesday afternoon that the finance minister uh, then announced the waiving of the educational tax portion. So. Um, as you can see now, since that announcement last Wednesday, we have now been reviewing what we can do further uh, based on that announcement. And if I need to call a council meeting uh, to discuss those options with my colleagues, I will. 
That's great. Thank you for that uh, update, Cam. Again, I recognize and I will echo the frustration um, businesses and residents generally have that um, we're hearing about lots of different avenues and opportunities, but it, the truth is that we don't have all of the information um, or the processes in place. Um, but so if anyone feels confused um, or uncertain, it's because uh, that information isn't clear yet. I know all levels of government though are working really hard at making it clear. And again, I'll reiterate the comment um, Eric Guthrie made that guelph.ca um, on their COVID page of the city of Guelph website, um, has all the resources for residents and businesses. It links to, um, excuse me, different government sites, to the chamber site for businesses and also uh, for individuals and employees. So do check out that information and um, it is being updated on a daily basis. I will ask um, uh, MPP Schreiner, Mike, um, cu we're curious about um, non-essential businesses ability to provide curbside pickup or delivery um, you know we know that some chains like staples and amazons of course are still delivering can small independent businesses who are not deemed essential continue to do so with that uh, yesterday uh, and we're still waiting on clarification from the ministry to be honest and so because of the uh, the fact that if you're not in compliance with the essential services um, from a business that you can be fined, I don't want to give out any inaccurate information. So at this point, I'm still seeking clarity from the ministry to be able to answer that question specifically. But personally, the thing I've been advocating for is that those businesses clearly be allowed to provide that service, provided it's, you know, they meet public health guidelines, physical distancing guidelines, sanitation guidelines, et cetera. Uh, because I don't think, you know, there's any, if Amazon can, can deliver it safely, there's no reason to think that um, a local business can. Um, the one thing that the legislation that passed last week does allow is for uh, restaurants who are doing delivery can now uh, deliver wine and beer as part of their delivery, which I know is something a lot of people in the restaurant industry were asking for. Uh, and, and so that service is available right now uh, and people can take advantage of it. I'm muted, I'm sorry. My uh, question from friends at Innovation Guelph. Uh, if an employee chooses not to work out of fear for their safety or their health, but their company is still working, are they eligible for the benefits like CERP or EI? And um, further, you know, what additional measures are we considering for different uh, quote unquote essential businesses? We've heard um, lots of anecdotal concerns for folks working in construction as an example. Um, I'm distracted because somebody was texting me a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know from every angle. <laughs> no problem. And happy that you're uh, taking them from all different <laughs> platforms. Yeah. No, curious about whether, so first of all, perhaps um, there's a question to Lloyd about uh, whether or not employees who are concerned for their safety um, and, you know, their health uh, because their business is still in operation, but they don't believe it's safe to be on site. Um, can they access EI or CERP? Yeah. And then further to that, one of the most common uh, industries that we're hearing from uh, with that concern is construction industry. And curious, Mike, on your Let end, whether or morning. not um, uh, you have any uh, feedback or commentary to that. So I can take the, the CERP and the EI. Um, in terms of EI processing, you need a record of employment. So that would sort that out, that if you are still working and you don't have a record of employment, then you wouldn't qualify under EI. Uh, the CERP system is yet to be announced and, and the details haven't been announced, but there will be some type of an, an attestation at the beginning of that and don't know 
that's going to say yet, but uh, you'll have to look at that and see uh, what type of uh, what type of, of uh, application responses you have to give in order to. Yeah, and so on so the I don't have that the, answer yet. Uh, essential business we'll list. Later on uh, first of all, I will post the one eight hundred number in the chat line for those of you who don't have it. Uh, and I realize there's a backlog on all of these lines, and so I I almost hesitate to post it, but. Uh, for anybody who has questions around where they stand as an essential or non-essential business in terms of opening, um, I'm, we're directing everybody to, to call because you want to make sure you have really accurate ministry confirmed information because there are penalties associated with non-compliance. Uh, construction sites have probably been the issue that people have raised the most concern with me uh, and just seeing it in the public as well. Uh, so as you know, uh, construction is, the province has deemed it an essential business. Um, the premier has on more than one occasion uh, indicated his frustration with not all construction sites complying with good public health guidelines, hygiene, et cetera. Uh, what I've been doing is, is um, when individuals call me with concerns about any business and their safety protocols, I've actually tried to reach out to that business owner in a nice way and say people have expressed concerns you know i highly advise you to uh, follow public health guidelines make sure you're practicing safe physical distancing you have proper washrooms and sanitation you have hand sanitizer etc so uh you know in the case of construction people aren't sharing tools like there's a lot of uh safety protocols um, but my advice would be to any of the businesses owners on on the call that if if you can avoid even if you are deemed an essential business if you can um, minimize your operations to those essential services and closely follow public health guidelines, it's certainly going to help uh, because it's absolutely critical that we slow the spread of the virus and that, you know, all the things you've been hearing, you know, flatten the curb, reduce the peak, all of that uh, is so critically important, um, primarily because we want to give all of our frontline healthcare workers a, a fighting chance and that we don't overwhelm um, uh, our healthcare system, but also, you know, it just flat out is those types of practices save lives. And ultimately, it's going to be better for our community and for humanity and ultimately our economy if we all do our part to make sure we engage in the practices that are going to save lives. Um, and so I know uh, in some of the conversations we're going to be having provincially negotiating around all the parties tomorrow. There's going to be some conversations, uh, I'm assuming, around construction. Uh, and uh, and um, I'll hopefully have more to report after after those conversations. Thanks, Mike. And, um, you know, we have a question from uh, someone wondering if they can provide their service with proper, dis proper distancing and disinfecting and health and safety measures, but aren't necessarily on the essential business list. Can they be operating? And further to that, what kind of enforcement will be in place? Yeah, so uh, my advice is if you're not on the essential business list, then don't operate. <laughs> uh, because, uh, I mean, one, you're you're going to be subject to potentially to penalties. Uh, and so the province does have um, uh, inspectors out. They are enforcing. Uh, my guess is a lot of it right now is probably complaint driven because there's only so many inspectors and there's a large number of you know businesses and work sites all over the province. Uh, but but I highly advise you to um, follow the guidelines that have been established. Um, in many respects, they're very broad, and I would say the biggest feedback I've received from the public in general is that many people feel they're too broad and that the number of businesses that are listed as essential uh, is 
too many. And construction has been one of the areas where people have raised a lot of concerns. And I want to be very honest and frank with people. I've raised concerns as well. So I, you know, talked to the premier directly and brought it up in debate in the house uh, that I was concerned because um, I'd rather see a, a, a short term slowdown in economic activity so we can get the economy restarted sooner and and start talking about recovery sooner. Uh, but I think certainly the priority has to be saving lives and stopping the spread of the virus. Uh, and as soon as I get a moment, I will post the 1-800 number in the chat box for those of you who Thanks, don't Mike, have I'll it. give you that moment now and uh, maybe pose a question to Mayor Guthrie. Cam, um, and, and any uh, other officials, gentlemen, um, if you have feedback about this generally, uh, with different payments being deferred, um, but in this case, let's say asking for property tax deferrals, um, will the uh, will they, the balance be due immediately or prorated? Uh, what will payment look like uh, when uh, those kinds of fees are deferred, Cam? So that's actually, um, that's a good question. Uh, it's actually being reviewed right now. I'm sorry I keep saying the same answer. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a straight answer, though. Um, since last week, when we, as I said, when the province announced the deferral of the education tax portion to help give some breathing room financially to municipalities. So since since uh, that, that uh, Wednesday afternoon, our finance staff have been plugging in uh, different options and trying to realize the different impacts of choices that could be in front of us for our council to decide and so that uh I, I can't quite answer it only because i haven't seen the impact reports from from our staff yet and so i, I thought it would just be direct in my answer that that's I, I would just say stay tuned uh this is not something that i want to have prolonged um that we uh you know don't get at it right away. We, we are getting at it right away. Uh, so just stay tuned. Okay, thanks, Cam. Again, I appreciate that um, there's a lot of requests and high needs right now for businesses and residents. Um, I know that all three levels of government are working hard to address that, find solutions, and, um, and get that information to us as soon as possible. Um, again, I just uh, really want to reinforce that that information is being collected um, collectively. It will be on Guelph.ca website. Um, anything business related will always be on the Guelph Chamber COVID website. Um, anything residential uh, related on the city site. And we are working and will continue to work collectively to have the details of the programs that we are talking about to you in a timely fashion with um, as much instruction and support as possible as well. Um, I'll uh, ask a question to Lloyd. Um, uh, there's been some confusion um, around records of employment, um, and this is maybe a two-part question. You know, what kind of instruction should employers uh, know about um, as they have to may have to consider laying off employees? Um, you know, what do they put on their ROE? And then further to that, there was a question about as an essential service, um, and I want to read it directly here. The question is, um, employees are requesting ROEs, um, recognizing that self-isolation will provide them EI or perhaps CERP. Um, how, are we, how do we avoid fraudulent claims? You know, any feedback about ROEs generally, Lloyd? Yeah, you, the box you check off is shortage of work. And um, that's also reflected in the CERP program or the CERB program that uh, you have a, a drop in business of 30%. You'll be, um, I'm sorry, the payroll, uh, so many letters here, the uh, payroll benefits, 75% uh, uh, sub uh, subsidy on the payroll benefits is with a 30% drop in work. So both those streams reflect a drop in work. But when you're doing the ROE, you check off the box that it's because a shortage of uh, shortage of, bit of work. Uh, 
Yeah, the prime minister in his address said, uh, don't game the system. Um, it, it will be checked up. At this point, we have to get through what we're going through and we're trusting Canadian businesses to uh, only be applying when uh, and using the money that they receive to pay their employees. And of course, that's totally traceable through uh, CRA and there will be penalties for the people that uh, aren't complying and the money will have to be returned. So uh, it's not a good idea to try to use this as a way of gaming Thanks the system so and we wouldn't expect and, that um, Canadian I'll businesses would do that. Shoot a question over to Cam, um, although it may also be um, for Mike. Um, and I like it, it's solution driven, um, it's well intentioned. Will there be a need for temporary housing for, for example, healthcare staff in the coming months? Uh, what can businesses do? How else can we help? Um, any feedback, Cam, first and then Mike? Yeah, that question's come to me um, a few times over the past week. Um, I believe I've actually seen, or I, I haven't seen, I'm sorry, I've heard, I think it might have been Niagara area where frontline healthcare workers are being put up in maybe hotel rooms and things like that, so they're not having to go home. Um, but that is something that is completely overseen by, I would say, two, two key agencies in town that are really running the show for everybody right now, which is... Uh, the Wellington Duffer and Guelph Public Health Unit and the Family Health Team. So those two are already in discussions on, again, lots of options that are coming their way uh, in regards to that. Right now, hotel rooms are being used uh, locally to help uh, give space for our most vulnerable population, the homeless population in town. Uh, so it is already being used uh, for that way. Uh, but uh, anything in regards to the front line healthcare workers would have to go through public health uh, and the family health team. I don't know if Mike, if we have anything further to that. I would, I would echo what Cam just said and just say that the, you know, the poverty task force, the family health team, community health center, drop-in center, Hope House, everyone really rallied, particularly when it came to finding spaces for people who don't have um, a home to shelter in place and and there is some provincial money to support those types of initiatives which we can help those kinds of organizations with um, and then for further housing discussions i think from a queen's park level are, are going to happen are going to start happening tomorrow i've been told that the all party uh meeting that's going to be hap that's going to be taking place for when we go back to queen's park next week uh, specifically is including the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And so we're going to begin that conversation and hopefully have more information uh, soon. I want to be really conscious if of I could, time. Oh yeah, go ahead, Lloyd. Sorry, if I could add, I don't know how you do this with this technology. Um, we've increased the reaching home funding that'll be coming through the county as well for homeless. Uh, strategies and, 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 and supporting people that are experiencing homelessness in Guelph. Um, we also have the Canada housing benefit that was scheduled to be rolled out uh, at the beginning of April, somewhere around April 6th to 8th, somewhere in that period, again, through the county and the county and I have had some conversations about, about that, that it is still uh, scheduled to be rolled out. Perfect, thank you, Lloyd. Um, thank you all. I, again, just want to be mindful of everyone's time today. Um, and uh, and I want to just give some additional resources. Again, I believe we caught most of the questions, but if something very specific was missed, please do email the chamber or myself directly and we'll follow up with you. Um, I want to thank, of course, um, all of our elected officials locally. Thank you, Lloyd, Mike, and Cam for this great discussion today. We're incredibly proud to be a part of this supportive business community and We'd also like to recognize our community partners, such as Innovation Guelph, the Business Center Guelph Wellington, the Downtown Guelph Business Association, and the City of Guelph's economic development team. We've all been in touch on a daily basis, and they are all providing programs and resources uh, for folks to take advantage of. So I do want to quick, quickly flag that Innovation Guelph provides mentorship and business support services um, to innovative organizations, and all of their staff and mentors are still available to meet and support you virtually. The Downtown Guelph Business Association is staying connected to all of their member business organizations. We do really recognize, um, and they do, when I was on a call with Marty yesterday, 
the difficulties that our uh, retailers and restaurants are facing, especially as the, again, the first of the month looms. The Business Center Guelph Wellington is continuing to offer free one hour consultations to any business that needs to speak to an advisor about a specific business issue. If you need assistance, you can go to their website and book a time online. Do know though that we all have the same level of information at this point, but as programs continue to be delivered, you can connect with any of us and any of these organizations to help navigate the resources. And if any questions related to the impact of municipal closures on your business, please direct them to biz, B-I-Z, info at guelph.ca. Uh, the City of Guelph staff are constantly monitoring this and we'll get uh, those answers to you immediately. Again, I'd like to reinforce that at the Guelph Chamber, we will continue to advocate, connect and convene on behalf of our members and uh, the, for the business community at large. Uh, we're looking forward to continuing to provide you with the support that we can and I hope everyone takes care and we'll continue to be in touch over the coming uh, hours, days, and weeks. Thanks everyone again for participating and uh, we'll be posting this video shortly. Thanks everyone.